hey students welcome back to the channel and today we are going to learn indian economy on the eve of independence from the subject economics so get ready with your paper and pen and here we go The topics covered under the chapter is the state of Indian economy under colonial rule, agriculture sector, foreign trade, industrial sector, infrastructure, demographic condition, and occupational structure. Herein, we are going to discuss how each of these sectors got impacted from the various colonial or British policies, and also in detail about the economic condition that prevailed uh, during that time. starting with indian economy under colonial rule so basically the objective of the british rule in india was to reduce india to a mere exporter or a supplier of raw materials because india was an agrarian nation and it had huge capacity of producing best quality of raw materials and at that time britishers were expanding their industries in britain and which required good quality of raw materials so that the demand for their finished goods in the markets this global markets increase so that is the reason britain tried bringing in policies which were more favorable for britain and less favorable towards india first they started with was exploitation of the handicrafts since ancient times india has been producing different kind of commodities such as handmade baskets or materials made from precious stones pearls jewelry etc and which had great demand in the global market all of these was possible because of the finest quality of raw materials available in india and the various policies which the british introduced completely exploited the handicraft industries and led to huge employment uh, in the country next was reduced india to a mere supplier as i already stated they wanted to expand their industries they introduced strategies wherein the exports of india's were considerably reduced of finished goods and they were forced to export only and only the raw materials and therefore reducing india's status as an exporter of finished goods in the global platform next was huge imports of foreign goods since all the raw materials manufactured were sent to britain very less amount of raw materials was available for the domestic production and uh, on the other hand britain imported lot of foreign goods or manufactured in their nation which led to increase amount of foreign goods availability in the country and people had no option but to purchase them because they were available at a lesser price the reason being is that when these goods were imported the import duty was either very low or no import duty was charged which made these foreign goods very cheap and affordable to the people whereas on the other hand the goods which were manufactured domestically the taxes imposed on them were very high and the quality also was not sufficient because best quality of raw materials were already exported to britain so because of this people had no other choice but to switch to cheaper foreign goods available in the market next is high taxes ranging from primary activity to that of tertiary activity all the activities had to face high amount of taxes imposed by the government by this they tried to increase their revenue which ultimately led to a burden on the indians next is restrictive trade policies the trading activities were also regulated that was the quantum and the quality of goods were also regulated by the britishers the reason for this is that if india was allowed to freely trade the demand for indian products will be higher than that of british goods and this could cause loss to the britishers and that is the reason they tried imposing lot of restriction on the indian goods so that they could flood the foreign goods all across the globe this policy was followed for years and years which completely affected the condition of the indian economy coming to agricultural sector we all know india is an agrarian nation because majority of the workforce is in this sector 
the features is that it's the source of income direct or indirect it is majority of the population earns revenue or income from the agricultural sector and it's a major occupation so because of this agriculture sector has always been the most important uh, since time immemorial and uh, britishers also introduced policies which affected it largely which led to the fall of its contribution to the gross domestic product the various problems which agriculture sector in india face a lack of facilities agriculture requires irrigation facilities requires easy access to the markets better road and infrastructure all of these were not available or were not in a good condition which affected the agricultural production next was zamindari system under which the zamindars imposed high amount of taxes on the peasants uh, irrespective of their production and this led to a huge deterioration in the condition of the peasants next is commercialization Britishers forced the peasants to grow a certain type of crops, basically cash crops. The reason being is that selling these kind of crops in the market could earn them huge revenue, and the peasants were forced to grow them. Apart from that, they were also forced to grow indigo and opium, which were in high demand in Britain, and which required techniques such as slash and burn or shifting cultivation, which leads to loss of fertility of the land, and the land cannot be further used. For for production for say a period of 5 to 6 years so all of these led to the fall in the agricultural productivity despite of this the government attention towards this sector was very very low and it continued to fall over a longer period of time and thus its contribution declined moving ahead to foreign trade it takes place between countries it is called as foreign trade india has been an important trading nation since ancient times and we have been a major exporter to all the countries the money that we received from the foreign trade was high that is we were having a favorable trade balance but because of the repressive policies of the britishers wherein we were reduced to be an exporter of silk wool and cotton and forced to become an importer of british final goods our trade balance became unfavorable causing a great loss to the domestic income next here is industrial sector industrial sector's contribution was significant but later due to the different policies introduced its contribution to the gdp became very low also we discussed that handicrafts and handloom industries had faced setback due to that the rate of unemployment in the country also increased one of the major success was the establishment of tisco that is tata and iron steel corporation in the year 1907 which contributed to the production of capital goods overall we can say that the structure the volume and the composition of industrial sector considerably changed under the british rule next is infrastructure infrastructure was greatly developed under the british rule like they developed railways water transport and other facilities but the crux is that it was developed only and only for colonial interest they did not have any interest for developing it for the welfare of the indian citizens apart from this roads were developed in india the roads were not in a very good condition especially during the rainy season that is the reason the britishers required good roads so that they can easily transport materials from one place to the other ports and stations were also developed for the movement and export of raw materials it was required for timely availability of the raw materials so that the industries which were growing in britain could manufacture their finished goods next was inland trade in sealand so as to ensure a facilitation of goods and services within the country and next is electrographs and postal services britishers not only focus on the transportation facilities but they also set up the routes of better communication in india by developing electrographs and postal services and making communication more faster and smoother in the country now looking at occupational structure in india at that time the major workforce was in agriculture as we could see it is 70 to 75% and in case of industrial and manufacturing sector it was 15 to 
one after the other the britishers had introduced repressive policies due to which the agriculture had suffered a lot as we discussed in the previous slides and the population and the workforce in the agriculture remained the same but the growth became stagnant and the contribution of the agriculture was very very low to the total gdp of the country and the productivity kept declining which overall affected the country because india is largely an agrarian nation and its major source of income or dependency was on agriculture now let us have a look at the demographic condition demographic condition basically expresses the type of the population and the statistics with respect to their literacy births deaths etc so india's uh, demographic condition was not very good during the colonial rule you can see that the growth rate of population was low that is the population of india at that time was not very high as it is today and the female literacy was very very low it was low as that of 7% means the women were not much educated and they were just restricted to domestic or household work and next is high mortality rate which means that the health facilities at that time was not very good due to which the rate of deaths were high including that of infants next is life expectancy today the life expectancy is as high as 68 or 69 but that time the life expectancy was just 44 years and uh, next was diseases and pandemic uh, people used to frequently face the pandemics and suffer from lot of diseases the reason being is poor hygiene conditions or sanitation lack of knowledge etc and as we already mentioned that the literacy rate was low especially for that of females so people were not much aware as to how to deal with them next is lack of educational facilities colleges or institutions at that time were not robust as they are today and therefore the education facilities remained very low also institutions which were available at that time used to only glorify britishers and uh, show how weak or inferior indians are to them the next is unequitable distribution of resources the resources were not evenly distributed that is the same pattern of rich becoming richer and poor becoming poorer this was that britishers always tried to gain more support of the rich people and uh, focus less on the poor and that is the reason this gap widened and even today if you see there is huge gap between the rich population and the poor population in terms of resources and in terms of their condition and here i conclude the topic hope you all enjoyed the session and uh, do like share and subscribe the channel also if you have any questions you can mention them in the comment section and do let us know the topics you want us to make videos on and keep studying and keep growing all the best and thank you